sermon about being fully engaged. In that sermon, we used the experience of floating down the river, a river, to describe the character of God's plan in our lives. If you've ever been on a river float, you'll understand. You're going to go wherever the river is going to take you. The same is true of our involvement in God's plan for us. We also talked about Paul's missionary work in Asia and how things didn't go quite how he had planned. They were blocked by the Holy Spirit from going into a couple of different locations that they had planned to go. And they ended up in unfamiliar territory, preaching to people that they didn't originally intend to talk with. Through it all, it was clear that God had a plan for Paul and Timothy and that they were going to go wherever God was taking them. They were on a journey, and God was in control. Today is, at least on an official level, my last Sunday here. And we're having the whole lunch party after, uh, and I have to say, it kind of sucks a little bit. Uh, not the lunch, that's going to be great, don't worry. Uh, the last Sunday party. The same goodbye part. But, as this is my last sermon, I was charged with the task of giving a final word. Of looking at the whole of my time and experience here with you all, and talking about it in front of everyone. And I thought, hey, now would be a great time to talk about being on a journey again. I think we can all say, we can all agree, that Living Water has been on a journey. It all began over ten years ago, with growth in mind. It began with a new idea, to be a multi-site church. St. Luke Ann Arbor and Living Water, two locations, working together to accomplish big things for God's kingdom. It began as a new adventure. And it was. There were years of strong growth. There was energy and excitement. And it even got to the point where we needed to add a new staff member. <laughs> and so I started here on a new adventure. Uh, I was straight out of college, or perhaps more accurately, uh, I was still in college and doing my internship here. Amanda and I had just gotten married, and we had kind of just started that new chapter in our lives. And I have to admit, there were times that I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I remember a uh, distinctly large number of breakfast clubs my first year, where we played Bible trivia for the most of the time. Uh, but I learned, and you all helped me. And so together we did ministry, and we tried some things that didn't work out so well. But we tried again, and we even came across some things that, that worked all right. We are on a journey, and God is in control, right? That's how it was for Paul and Timothy, and that's how it is for us. Although, when we look at the reading for today, uh, a passage which picks up right after we left Paul and Timothy on their missionary journey, the last time we talked about all this stuff, it doesn't really look like my kind of journey. Uh, they are framed, arrested, beaten, and thrown into jail. I'm guessing that wasn't part of their original plan when they rolled into town. And it had to feel pretty discouraging. I think for many who are here in Living Water, week in and week out, we can kind of relate. We started with a plan that involved growth, that involved impact, excitement, and energy. Yet, when we take a look around at our lives, at the life of this church, of this site, things around here don't look the way we originally thought they would. They look different. And I think sometimes that can be hard. I remember hearing about the housing developments that were supposed to go in, about businesses that were going to open up, about a piece of land that we had already had a deal on that would put us in the heart of a new and growing neighborhood. I remember hearing about 
reports and studies that were projecting our growth at 400 in worship by the 10 year mark. Worship being in a building with room to grow even more and having multiple services. And that stuff hasn't happened. And sometimes it can feel like we haven't had the impact that we thought we might. And I think we're tired, you know, literally tired of setting up a sound system every week and setting up and tearing down nursery and children's ministry. And we're tired of constantly being asked to volunteer for stuff and it never feeling like we have all the help we need. Because let's face it, there's a lot of stuff to get done around here. And now we're even dealing with challenges, change and uncertainty in our multi-site system. Challenges that evoke fear. Fear that the church we know and love is changing. Fear that we might not like what comes next. Fear of difficult and stressful conversations and decisions. And even fear that some decisions might eventually lead to the end of this church as we know it. On the surface, that can kind of look like failure. And it can kind of look like we didn't do our job. And I know some of you have to be feeling this way. Because from time to time, that's how I feel. And I don't think I'm alone. But defining success by our own standards and expectations is not an accurate way to live. We don't get to make that definition. Because despite our best efforts at times to make this our church, it isn't. God's church. And he gets to decide what our mission is. He gets to decide what we are here to accomplish. And he gets to say what success is and what it isn't. Not us. As a goal setter, as someone who likes to create a list and check items off, that can be a tough pill to swallow. In our text, we see that Paul didn't exactly get to define his mission either. It was the Spirit's leading that told him where to go and what he was going to do. He didn't end up at some mega-sized conversion moment either, with droves of people coming to him from everywhere. He was led to something small, something intimate, with people he didn't really know and hadn't set out to talk to in the first place. And a few days later, he ends up beaten and in prison because he chose to free someone from a demon. Living Water, you are here in this place for a reason. You are on a journey, and God is in control. The entire St. Luke multi-site is in that same boat. The outcome is God's plan, and not ours. We get to be active participants, but in the end, this is not up to us. So perhaps I would amend my original statement to this. God is on a mission, and we get to be a part of it. What is that mission? Well, you may have noticed that so far I've completely ignored the second half of today's reading. Paul is in jail. There's a giant earthquake. Doors fly open. Chains fall off. Paul stays put. What? Paul stays in the jail. Huh? What was he thinking? Why didn't he leave? I think for me, I would have been out of there in an instant. But instead, Paul had his eyes on God's mission and on his own plans. Paul stops the jailer from killing himself and instead assures him that no one has left, that he didn't need to take his own life because all of the prisoners were still there. The guy is taken aback. He can't understand why they are still here. No way. Forget about that. The jailer immediately knows that Paul and Timothy haven't left because of the God they know and trust. <coughs> and he wants to know and trust him too. So the guard and his entire family believe and are baptized that day. 
God was on a mission, and Paul and Timothy got to be a part of it. Living Water, God has done some amazing things through you. Through each of your lives and your contributions to this ministry, through your time, talents, and treasure, lives have been and are continuing to be changed. God has used this church and community of believers to impact and forever change the lives of people here in Whitmore Lake and beyond. Entire families have come to know Christ in deeper and more profound ways. New relationships have been forged between believers. Children and adults have been baptized. Teenagers have been confirmed. The forgiveness of sins and God's grace in the lives of sinners has been proclaimed in this place every single week for the past 549 weeks. Is that like happening? And it doesn't stop there either. The people of this church have helped to support local ministry and outreach. We've bought backpacks for kids, helped to clean up the town, supplied gifts and money to those in need at Christmas time. We've given out free hot dogs, which, by the way, I would love to know the total number of hot dogs we've given out <laughs> over the course of 10 years. It has to be just an astronomical number. We've supported and encouraged missionaries to other countries, sent care packages to soldiers, sent people of our own to other countries to do mission work. The list goes on and on. And it doesn't stop there either, because the people of this church have helped to support and send people into ministry, both in daily life and professionally. Think of all the families that have come through our doors and then moved away. Do you think we help prepare them to live as disciples in their next environment? Better believe it. We've also sent both Adam and Adam to the seminary. And we've had two family life practicum students, one of which is here, Austin, uh, and helped one intern grow into professional ministry. No, it may not look the way we thought it would when we started. We may not have a building yet, and we may be really tired of having to set all this stuff up every week. But it is God's plan, not ours. It's His mission. A mission to redeem and restore all people to Him. A mission to grab hold of us when we are at our worst. When we, like the jail, give it up all for it. And we're ready to throw in the tower. Our Heavenly Father says, wait. I'm still here. I'm here for you. Ultimately, God's mission is for each of us. That you and I would know Jesus in a deep and personal way. That our lives would be changed forever because of his work on the cross for us. That when everything feels like it's coming apart, when nothing in our life seems to go right, that we would have the hope that does not disappoint us. It's the same hope that Paul and Timothy had, the same hope that was given to the jailer and his family. That same hope is for you and for me. And that is God's mission. We get to be a part of it. So the journey doesn't end here. Not for living water. Not for you. Not for me. Sure, this may be my last sermon here. And yes, I will be moving to Arkansas in a few weeks. But our journey is far from over. 
We are all followers of the same Jesus. And the same Jesus told us each to have the same vision. No matter where it is, place us. God is on a mission. We get to be a part of it. Amen. <laughs>